So we should start discussing what the benefits of carrying a ladder by yourself and deploying it by yourself is. Not a lot of departments have a lot of staffing, so if you're short on staff, then you're obviously gonna have to do a lot of the jobs on your own and divide the work. In truth, we're a team of individuals dividing up the work and tackling as many things at once as we possibly can because everything we do is time-based. If we have to throw the ladder together and then we have to deploy the line together and then we have to force the door together, we're running out of time and the calls going to be done before we finish everything. So the more that we can divide the work up as individuals and get things done and meet up when we're going to be working together, the better it is for the people we're showing up to serve. Some of the benefits of the high shoulder carry uh, is that it can go up and over things. So say landscaping or bushes, cars of a certain size, recycling and garbage bins, anything that might be around the fire ground that if you're carrying the ladder low on your shoulder, that it's going to be awkward to get around uh, and, and move the ladder to where it needs to be. Another benefit of the high shoulder is that it's already in a throwing position. So you can, as you're going to see when we get into deploying the ladder, you can use your momentum walking forward to actually help you deploy the ladder up as opposed to just muscling it up. So for carrying the ladder together, we do need to communicate back and forth with where we're going and what we're doing. Whereas if you're carrying it by yourself, you can have a plan in place and if you have the skill and competency, you can just get the ladder where it needs to be and throw it up, which actually will end up being faster. One of the main cons that I've heard about the high shoulder carry is that it blocks your visibility. So on that one side where you're carrying the ladder, it could potentially block your vision uh, to the one side. Luckily, ladders have openings in them uh, and you can actually angle the ladder down or a ladder up to uh, look around, see if there's any blind spots like you would when you're driving an apparatus. So we should start off by getting comfortable with uh, how the ladder would feel picking it up by ourselves and also where the balance point of the ladder is. That's really the key to all of this is balance point uh, and momentum. So the most basic pickup to uh, get used to the balance point and get used to how it feels on your shoulder and building up your strength uh, is to lay it fly down. You've got a flat surface and we have the bed towards us. All you want to do is flip it onto its beam. Your balance point on the, the 12 rungs of the ladder is obviously going to be you know close to the sixth rung. Now from this point you can then lift it onto your knee. So just using your hands under the top rung, just lift it onto your knee. You can stabilize it. You know, we're not in a rush at this point. Right? You're just getting used to how the ladder feels and how it how it balances. And then I want to go on to my shoulder from here. So I'm going to lift it from under the beam now and turn my body and face the direction of the butt of the ladder because when I throw it, that's the part that's going to be going on the ground. So go on to your shoulder. And you can see the ladder's already started to sort of balance on its own. If you're farther back, standing up in this from this position might be a bit awkward with the ladder down. What I recommend is you pull it, the ladder will right itself. And then I can just position my feet to stand straight up like a squat, like a one-legged squat. Put the butt of the ladder on the ground to stabilize it. Hold on to it, grab the bottom of the lower beam, lower it onto your knee, and lower it onto the ground. Second pickup, once you're comfortable and you've worked through that three stage, you feel like you're getting more confident and you're getting stronger, is actually one of the pickups you could use on a fire seam. If you set up for a writ or a fire ground operations, you have a ladder out, it's flat on the ground as it is. This is one that you could actually do by yourself. All we're gonna do is again, flip it bed towards us on its beam. Now from the tip of the ladder, we're just gonna lift it onto our right shoulder. We're gonna walk towards the middle, slowly uh, and pulling it towards us. Where this can start to get uncomfortable for you is that the ladder is going to want a natural fall to the outside. So having my hand high on the outside is going to prevent that. My left hand's low, so as I pull it towards me. And if you get far enough up your shoulder, eventually the ladder is just going to right itself. It's all about using your big muscles and physics. To reverse that, you're just going to slowly let it slide stabilizing high up, and you can back down to the tip and place the ladder back on the ground. If the ladder is coming off the truck, uh, a couple things to consider, I guess, as a driver, always park your apparatus far enough back from a truck that has ladders sliding out of a, a compartment so you, they actually have room to pull the ladder out and shoulder and deploy. Parking too close, you're going to completely eliminate the ability for that ladder to be used on steam. One of the benefits of coming off the truck is it's probably going to be pretty close to your shoulder height. You may have to squat down if you're a little taller. 
or lift it down on your shoulder slightly if you're a little shorter. But you would want to slide the ladder out to that balance point of around the sixth rung. Get your hands in position and then walk forward until you feel the ladder clear the bed. Now I'll talk about flipping the ladder on your shoulder. People can argue, well, it's a parlor trick or it's a parking lot trick, or let's see you do that on the fire ground. Really my approach to it would be if you're super confident and comfortable with it and you can do it, then why not use it? The other way to approach it is, even if I get really good at flipping it and having it on my shoulder, I'm just building competency and comfort with the ladder and my strength. You can start with it, fly down and, be, and bed up. We're gonna bring it towards this. When you're grabbing the ladder, only grab the, the top rung. You don't wanna be grabbing down lower on. It stretches your hands out and you don't get a, a full grip of the rungs. What I wanna try and do is get the ladder flat on my, on my legs in sort of a squat, a very like stable athletic position. I'm going to use my legs as much as possible. Grab high on my left side. That's the direction I'm going. This is going onto your right shoulder. Obviously, you're gonna to have to reverse all this for going on your left. And low on my, my right hand. So just get comfortable and you'll know that you have the balance point, right? If you're off one way or the other, the ladder, you're gonna feel that weight. But again, this is just become, becoming comfortable with the balance point of the ladder. Balance it on your legs and just get used to the motion of rolling and moving the ladder. The reason why my right hand is low and my left hand is high is they're actually gonna reverse. So as I flip it, I'm gonna be pushing with my right hand and that hand's gonna end up on the high side of the, other, of the ladder away from me. Honestly, you just get used to throwing it harder than you think, and that'll make it easier. So from the ground in one motion. Fancy tricks, uh, you know, if they're not the fastest way of doing something, obviously they're not what should be used. So again, if it comes into your competency, your strength, your confidence, and your ability to actually play it out with a pack on in real life. So another technique for picking it up would be having it on its beam and literally picking it up in like a clean uh, and jerk kind of motion where you're using the momentum and your strength to get the ladder moving and then stepping underneath the ladder into the balance point. Again, coming with comfort and strength, uh, confidence, uh, you'd have to work up to that to be able to eventually be able to do that on scene with a pack on. So get strong doing it like this and then constantly be trying to make things more and more difficult and realistic for yourself. Then that translates to actually effective work on the fire scene and confidence that you'll be able to use it in these situations. You know where that balance point of the ladder is. If you grab too low when you go to pick it up, it's gonna to wanna to fall down. So you do wanna kinda of be in the middle uh, of the, the rung. If you're too high, then you might not be able to get enough momentum to actually get it up high enough to step underneath it. Again, using your legs, it's almost, it's like that Olympic lift kind of motion and momentum and driving straight up. You can do it off your knees if you want. If you want to stand up and balance it like you did with the flip or you can try it directly from the ground. So here we go. So one of the big things to consider is using your momentum. A lot of people, when they go to throw the ladder, they'll actually stop and then throw the ladder. If you keep their body moving forward, your momentum is going to help the ladder uh, actually raise it itself up a lot easier. So walking and using your momentum moving forward, then I'm gonna pull the ladder close to me as I drop the butt down and kind of give it a push with my shoulder and using my legs. So hand position once the ladder's on your shoulder, obviously a little bit that's gonna be dictated by the length of your arms. But ideally I wanna have a hand right beside my ear my head a little bit higher up to keep that ladder stable this way and I'll stretch my one arm out and why that's going to become important is when I go to throw it I'm actually going to pull the ladder closer to me so to bring the butt of the ladder as close to me on the ground as I possibly can again you want that nice balance point where the ladder is sitting on my body and I'm not using my muscles to keep it from falling backwards or falling forwards if you do need to go around corners it's obviously flexible where I can lower the butt or lower the tip to get up and over things so there is flexibility in the carry. Some reasons why you would want to become comfortable with beam raising the ladder is that you can't always depend on having the ability to flat raise it. If you can't have the building accessible to push the butt against and then drive the ladder up as a, as a fulcrum point, uh, say there's a balcony, you're trying to throw the ladder uh, between houses that are close together, um, or there's a, a large overhang or something in the way, or maybe landscaping, 
uh, then these are all reasons why you would want to be comfortable with being able to do a beam raise and not depending solely on that one way of doing it, uh, flat, flat raising it uh, with the, the use of the building or some kind of obstruction on the ground. Okay, that would be that. Always have the beam of the ladder in contact with your shoulder. And you can just angle it back. I just take a, a couple steps back and I can stop in this position and be very comfortable holding the ladder and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, as I lift the ladder up, I'm gonna take a step back and lift the, the butt of the ladder off and then let the ladder kind of slide forward on its own. So slide down my shoulder and eventually I'm gonna get into that balance point. Now we can start talking about how to control the ladder while we extend it. I've seen people have their foot on the outside of, of one of the uh, butts of the ladder. Uh, I'm not necessarily a fan because I think it might lead to its ability to twist on me. I like to have my shin in the middle of the bottom rung. And then how I'm stabilizing it when I grab the halyard is with my elbows on the beams. So if anything goes wrong with the ladder and I'm close to the building, I can just lean in with my elbows and put my body weight on the ladder and that's gonna push it into the building. If my elbows stay high, as opposed to coming down low like this, this is gonna allow the ladder to go over my head. So the higher my elbows stay, the ability for that ladder to fall back over my head is limited. And you can see here, I even I have control over the halyard, not pulling down on it, but pulling back towards myself. I have control over the ladder in that way too. Getting comfortable with throwing ladders is just literally throwing a lot of ladders and having it actually go off balance on you and getting more and more comfortable with how the ladder behaves in certain situations or when you handle it a certain way. So obviously this is nice, solid, flat, easy, stable ground. Again, if it's uneven, there are a number of things that can be used to stabilize the ladder to make up the gap. If it's on a off-grade cribbing, I've seen a halligan used. Uh, this is where you're on scene, you're gonna be getting a, get a bit creative or maybe making a decision of, can you ladder that window and do you have to have access somewhere else? But given how the flat the ground is now here, so throwing it on its beam with the bed beside me and with the, that, uh, that allows the halyard to be immediately accessible. So as soon as the ladder is thrown, I can start to raise it. If it's thrown the other way, the halyard is going to be on the inside close to the building and I've seen obviously the technique of people supporting it from the outside so it doesn't slide which is great and leaning the ladder in and pulling the halyard from here. Now some limitations on that are you don't necessarily have a really clean look at where the ladder is going and with the bottle on the, the, the uh, back of your helmet is going to be hitting the bottle and I can't really look up. So again one of the benefits of this position is I'm able to look, look up and see the actual windows or the obstructions of what I'm gonna be raising the ladder uh, to. So when extending the ladder, so the, the really the pull is kind of in, in this location here. If I do big pulls and I'm allowing the ladder to come back, or especially if there's wind, right, the ladder's gonna to wanna to go over my head. Um, and I'm obviously limited uh, as how high I can go. So you kinda of wanna keep your elbows on the beams at all time as you raise. So my elbows are always in contact. Lowering, just extending it, keeping my elbows on the beams and my shin in that middle of that rung and just letting it slide. If you're not comfortable with just letting the fly and the, the halyard slide, uh, you can do a controlled lower as just as you've raised it. Just make sure again, you've got your elbows on the beams. You know, a valued argument for this is if we're lowering the ladder, then there's probably not an urgency to get the ladder down. So why not just take the time to lower it more controlled? Fair enough. You would want to have the ladder positioned when you throw it to the side of the window that it's going to end up in uh, sitting at the sill of. So when I lower the ladder in and I flip it, it flips into position and then I can drag it back to my climbing angle. How high to go? Two to three clicks is going to be what gives you the proper reach to the sill of the second story window once it's dragged into a proper position for climbing and removing firefighters and or victims. Obviously the angle of the climb is gonna be dictated by what kind of real estate you have available uh, from the ladder uh, outwards. So if we have a house that's very close by or again other obstructions, the ladder's not gonna be able to be at uh, the ideal angle so perhaps then it's not extended as high so that when it's dragged back, it's going to be at a relatively good angle. <clears throat> so lowering the ladder against the building or the balcony 
Be sure to gather the halyard up in your hands. As, as the ladder gets farther and farther extended, you're gonna have more and more halyard on the ground. So it's something you're gonna step on. It's also something when you go to roll the ladder into place that it's gonna end up underneath the butt of the ladder, which is gonna restrict your ability to tie it off eventually. Once you've thrown it in position and you've extended it, have the habit of gathering the halyard up in your hand as you're gonna operate the ladder. You can lower it by the beams. Again, I have my shin in the middle of the bottom rung to keep it from sliding back as butting the ladder by myself. And I can lower the ladder in with the beams like this. The same way to pull it back out, I can pull it by the beams. You can do it by a rung or two rungs, lowering it in and out. And you can also use the halyard. So having the halyard tight, and I can just ease the ladder against the building. The next step, once you've extended the ladder and you have it against whatever you're going to be laddering, then we wanna roll it into a fly out so we can climb it. Again, I mentioned gathering the halyard up in your hand. And as I roll the ladder, I always wanna be conscious of pushing the ladder into the building to keep it stable. Again, on, on slippery ground with some wind, uh, the ladder is going to be more likely to move on you, especially as it gets extended more and more. The higher the ladder is extended, the more unstable the ladder is going to be. So push the ladder into the building. I want to step my foot in the direction that I'm rolling the ladder, pushing into the beams. And I want to roll it into my body. Now I have control over it with my leg and the center of my body. I can actually let go to show that, that my body is actually controlling the ladder. This allows me to switch hands. So I've switched hands and just passed the halyard to that hand to keep it off the ground again, to keep it from going underneath the butt of the ladder. And I've switched hands still pushing and then pushing it into the building. If you're taught to raise the ladder fly out, what that limits is your ability to see where the ladder is extended to. You would need a spotter on the other side to be able to then dictate to you when to stop extending the ladder so it's at the proper height. My back is also to the building. I'm not looking where the ladder is going. And again, with that control I have, if I have an issue with the ladder uh, coming uh, back over my head, uh, I don't really have anything to push it into. I feel like I have less stability and be able to control the ladder. Whereas if on the other side, I have my elbows controlling the ladder towards me and I have the building to push it into if it's unstable. So another reason why I kept the halyard gathered in my hand was not only to keep it uh, from going underneath the butt of the ladder while I move the ladder into position, is now also it's I'm in position to tie it off. Depending on your department or your region, they may be very, very strict about you tying the halyard off before any firefighter climbs the ladder. In truth, if the dogs are locked properly, the chances of the ladder sliding uh, in this case are, are very, very small. Two ways of looking at it, once the dogs are locked and it's pulled to the proper climbing angle, again, everything is down to seconds in this job. The firefighter can be gone, right? They're up the ladder, they're in the window, and then that, once they're gone, that allows me, then I have the time to secure the halyard as a second safety. A lot of academies or departments will teach tying the ladder off to the beam, one side or the other. Uh, I guess you could have some arguments either way. The halyard to me in the middle, tying it off just with a clove hitch in the middle of, the, of, the, of a rung, keeps the halyard out of any, any of your feet stepping on it as you come down as a trip hazard. Just passing it directly through. So you're gonna pull the halyard through, pass it directly down around itself. So it bites on itself and then it comes back in and through on itself again. That's going to be your clove hitch. There's going to be a few ways firefighters tie this. It doesn't matter how you get the clove hitch done. It just matters that it gets done properly and in an efficient manner. So we're going to treat the edge of the building now as, an, as a sill of a window. So you want to have the tip of the ladder at the sill. If the ladder is sticking into the window, there's some argument like, well, you would be very easy to be able to sweep a hand up and you'd be able to feel that the ladder is there. The downside with having any of the ladder stick into the window is that then if you have to remove a victim um, or a firefighter in their full gear out of the window, it's, very, it's a lot more difficult to bring them up and over the tip, which makes it much more of a, a dangerous transition. So to bring the ladder back and drag it back, you can lift it by the beams if you want, right? Both beams or you can hold on to the rungs and lift it up. And again, I'm in control of it and just 
and just drag it back. So that would be the rungs. With the beam, I feel like I can look up straight, just lift the, the, the part of the ladder and bring it to the sill. Obviously now when it's in position, it's gonna have to be tied off or butted uh, at all times if someone's going to be up or down the ladder. So the discussion around proper climbing angles, so in any kind of textbook you're gonna read, there's that 75 degrees or uh, one quarter of the working height of the ladder, you know, stepping onto a rung and you know, having your arms straight, there's all these ways to check the, the climbing angle of the ladder, which again, may seem ideal in this kind of setting, but on the fire ground, like I talked before, how much real estate do you actually have, right? So you might want to ideally have a ladder at a certain angle and you just don't have the room. A good way to assess whether you're the 75 degree angle is something that you like is if you have the ability to do some bailout training and you're a uh, come down head first kind of person then get on a ladder that's at a 75 degree angle or or steeper and come down head first and see how you feel bringing that ladder down to say i don't have a protractor on me this is like 60 degrees or whatever it is the number doesn't matter you can see if i if i ex extend the ladder a bit more drag it back a bit farther that then coming down this ladder at this angle would be a lot more stable also think if you're a head first and bailout kind of person you have a pack on and all the weight of your body is forward and if you're not someone that can do eight or ten handstand push-ups and then you suddenly think with your pack on under stress you're going to bail fast out a window with two or three people following you and you're going to make your way down nice and strong hand over hand with never having done a handstand before i'd argue that i that's probably not going to happen come down head first on what you think is the textbook angle and then come down on more of a rescue angle and and see how you feel about it there's discussion around placing ladders in different positions for different purposes. It's having the tips into the uh, window for access. It's at the sill if we're gonna be doing bailout or victim removal for a VEZ. What we're always shooting for is what's most effective for the most numbers of applications. So if we have the opportunity to place it at a more exaggerated angle with the tips at the sill, you can use that same position for bailout, for victim removal, for firefighting, for clearing the glass. It does a number of things very, very well, as opposed to having them the move the ladder for every single evolution you're doing, which just adds complication in time. If for firefighting, if I'm at the sill, I can be down the ladder a few rungs, all the heat is escaping up and out and, and over my head. For breaking a window or ventilating, which would be maybe arguably another reason why you would want to be to the side. Uh, the ladder is at an angle. I'm wearing PPE and a face piece. Right? If glass is going to be falling on me, I'm not wearing you know, shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops. So some glass falling on my arms or my hands or my helmet and the, my face piece isn't going to have that dangerous of an effect. And also with the ladder being at the angle and me standing on the ladder away from the building, the glass isn't going to be falling physics-wise towards me. It's falling straight down. So as you clear the sill and clear the window, the glass isn't necessarily showering on top of you. So that would be something to discuss with people if there's an argument about what well, glass is gonna be falling onto you. So just to speak to an alternative to the leg lock, which you may be asked to pass as an, a JPR uh, or for sign offs with your department. Um, I've seen a lot of great firefighters recently posting uh, that or offering up that your knees into the between the rungs and out towards the beams is very very stable and I would tend to agree in this position pulling out towards the beams I, and leaning in I can work off both sides and switch if I want to as opposed to leg locking a, a certain way to work left and then having to rearrange and change your leg lock to work right safety wise the amount of movements that I have to do to bring my knees in towards the ladder leaning in um, is a lot less than having a pack on and having to step away and out from the ladder and then lift my foot up and over a rung and back through and hooking my foot. So if your legs aren't as long, you may have difficulty getting up and over the rung. If you have really big feet, you may have a really hard problem getting your foot through the rungs. So a lot of these things complicate and actually make things more dangerous of having to be away with your, with your center of gravity back from the ladder and having to manipulate in a non-stable way to get in a position that's supposed to be safe. So as you can see, just functionally, my weight is towards the ladder. I'm pulling out to the beams. If anything's wrong, I can just lean into the ladder itself. 
with very minimal movement. And now I'm freed up. If something has, to, if someone has to come out of the window down the ladder, I'm quickly out of the way. If the ladder truck started to slip, you know, I'd be a lot better off jumping from here, even though I might injure myself, as opposed to being locked into the ladder as the ladder falls and crashes down on my body and my leg. So reversing the process to bring the ladder down. Yes, we can do this in teams. If it's post-fire, there's not an urgency. Have as many people as you want. But if you want to add this into getting more and more comfortable with how the ladder behaves and moving it on your own, then I don't see why it's not worth um, you know, putting into what you're able to do. You can keep the halyards still secured and then we want to walk the ladder back into as close to the building or close to upright as we can, which makes it easier to pull it away from the building and then move ahead to, to lowering it. Uh, what we can do is just start by rolling it so that it's, that it's bed out. So again, that pushing in, controlling with your body. You don't need to let go, but just show you that the body is controlling it. And then putting it in place. We've rolled it out of the window onto the, the building beside that. And now we need to bring the ladder down. Lifting the ladder from here is gonna be a lot more difficult because the farther it's extended and the more weight, that pivot point is a lot farther back. You're gonna have a lot more effort to do that. So walking the ladder into the building, you have a lot easier time lifting it away from the building to get you into that retracting position. So at this point, untying the halyard, and again, keeping it gathered up in your hand as we manipulate the ladder around, so I don't step on and it doesn't end up, end up underneath the butt. Okay. Pulling the, the ladder away like we talked about, either by the beam, either by the rung, or either by just gathering the halyard up and pulling it towards me, right? Either way, we need to catch it in that elbows position with the, the shin in the middle of the rung. So that'd be your rungs and this would be your, your beams, right? I'm always ending up in this control position again. And then we've already discussed and showed the options of either a controlled slide or a controlled step-by-step -step lowering. So lowering the ladder, like a flat lower, we're gonna do a flat lower and a flat raise using the building and not using the building. Bringing it towards me, that shin in the middle of the rung. And now just extending your arms, going hand over hand, rung over rung. You know, you are releasing contact and then holding on to something uh, with each grab. Having your hands on the beams, you're always in full contact. You know, if you want to have safety on your mind, just extending your arms and literally walking backwards. So if we do have the building accessible, I mentioned how you may have an overhang. So say in this instance, how the uh, door is set back in from the edge of the building. So we'll do a flat raise using the actual door uh, or the building and that would be in a similar situation. You'll see how the ladder is then angled out when I finish. So the same as you would, you would lower the ladder, again, using your big muscles and not having to muscle up the ladder rung over rung like this, right? If your upper body strength isn't as high, that might be a challenge. Use your big muscles and use physics to your, your advantage. Just leaning in and pushing towards the structure with your arms straight, we'll get the ladder there. Now, I have to hold up high because the ladder's obviously angled the wrong way. So holding up high and grabbing a rung below and lifting it outwards from the building gets you into that position. So practicing this as any habit, you would just know this is what I'm getting into. This is where I need to position my hand. This is how I bring it up to where I want it to be. So flat raising the, the ladder without using the building at all, just raising it in open, in open space, open air. The same technique as lifting it, arms extended, walking into it. You kind of have to throw or pull the ladder a bit over your head as you go, and the, the shorter you are, the more that, that you're gonna have to use that technique. Taller people won't have to uh, be concerned about that as much. Because if I just walk into this now, the depending on what the surface is, the ladder might just slide. So you do have to think about sort of a pulling up as I push to make sure the ladder doesn't slide. So another tactic that might be a point of discussion is, do we use the ladder to break the window 
uh, before we're gonna get up there to make entry for a VEZ. Uh, so let's just offer maybe a few points of why that might not be ideal. From what we know about fire behavior, anytime you change a ventilation opening, you're adding oxygen into that space. And by breaking the window with putting the ladder into the place and then having to uh, drag it back to the proper climbing angle and then have your firefighter climb the ladder and then make it clear the rest of the glass from the, from the window and then make entry, that all takes time. And in that time, the fire behavior could dra dramatically change having get added the oxygen to the room if that room's not isolated. And you could have a, you know, an unwanted fire event, flash over or uh, increased um, uh, fire production while there's actually victims inside. The reason why we're putting the ladder in place for a VEZ is because we're very sure, the reason why we're putting the ladder in place for a VEZ, the whole, the whole, the reason we're putting the ladder in place for a VEZ is to go in and rescue people that are potentially in the room. So why we then add time to that for the fire to change its uh, behavior and maybe put them at risk. The other uh, point maybe against breaking the window with the ladder is the ladder is not designed for that. So we're bashing it once, twice, maybe multiple times to find, finally break the window. It maybe is going to put unnecessary um, impact or stress on the ladder. It's actually supposed to be used for rescuing victims. So we potentially could be damaging the ladder, which has happened on scenes before. And then now we'll have to lock it in place hope it's not damaged, and then put us and a victim on that same ladder. So why would we use something that's not used, not, why would we use something that's not meant for breaking windows to, to break windows? <clears throat> Another point to consider is smashing the ladder against the window is gonna shower more of that glass into the, the, the window and not be in more control to maybe pull some of it out when you're clearing it. Obviously, you have to break the glass with a tool that's gonna to push some of the glass inside. I'm not saying you can eliminate all the glass from entering the window, but again, if someone's bed is right beside the window or under the window, and you're smashing the ladder and showering them in glass, that's not necessarily ideal. It also puts glass in the space that we then potentially are dragging people, you know, not in protective gear across. So, um, one more thing to consider. <clears throat> 